Okay, I'll admit it. The reason that I wanted to play this game is this screenshot right here. Look at how painfully tactical this guy is. With four goggles on his face, two optics on his gun, a laser sight, a Garmin Fortrex, and a drone. Oh my goodness, it's so tactical. So CI Games allowed me early access to this uncomfortably tactical game under the one condition that I partner up with them for this video and let you know there's an open beta if you would like to play it for yourself from Friday, February 3rd through Sunday, February 5th. And if you pre-order the game, they throw in a season pass for no additional cost, including all kinds of content they plan to roll out in 2017, like single player expansions and multiplayer maps, an ATV, and even weapons like a compound bow and a TAC 338 sniper rifle. And for those of you that don't know what a 338 Lapua round is, it basically hits like a school bus. Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Will you shut up, Carl? I'm trying to take the shot. Climb on the magic school bus. But now that I have that out of the way, I can finally tell you about the naps. Yeah, the naps are one of my favorite features because with the ability to sleep whenever you want, it gives you complete tactical freedom over when you murder separatists. And seeing as this game takes place in Georgia, it happens to be crawling with separatists. Just keep in mind that I'm talking Georgia, Georgia, not Georgia. Georgia. Much like the freedom that the napping feature of the game provides, it also gives you complete freedom over how and when you kill the enemy. That guy down. You can boot up your rickety looking tablet and sign yourself up for main slash side missions or simply roam the forest shooting everyone that you come across in a totally relaxed freeform experience. Peekaboo! There's so much freedom in this game, you don't even have to focus on one single enemy. Personally, I was a little frustrated with some of the arrogance of the local livestock population with all of the spray-painted graffiti everywhere, so I decided to do something about it. Charlie One Actual, this is Bravo 2. I have eyes on a hostile bovine, over. That's a solid copy, Bravo 2. You are a clear to fire, over. Target eliminated. Let's go home, boys. But see, this is where things got a little messy because the chickens saw me do that and the chickens are not to be trusted with intel, so... Foxtrot 1, this is Zulu 2. I have a visual on the poultry VIP 9 meters to the northwest, over. Copy that, Zulu 2. Do you mean 9 clicks to the northwest? Over. Negative, Foxtrot 1. The chicken is 9 meters away from me. Over. Roger that, Zulu 2. Take the shot. Poultry down. Mission accomplished. Once you're done murdering the local livestock, it's time to move on to murdering the friendly neighborhood war criminals while gathering resources and completing missions. And the beauty of these missions is that you can be as stealthy or explosive as you want. Seriously, you can recon the entire area with your drone like your Casey Neistat shooting a vlog, only instead of getting a ton of subscribers, you're gonna get a ton of headshots. Or you can just rush in like a running back and blow everything and everyone up. You can always take a middle ground approach and rush in, but tactically with throwing knives or something. But here's the thing. You need to make a decision about casualties. I'm hit, damn it. Because after playing this game for what? 16 hours straight? Yeah, I'm sorry if my eyes were a little bit red. I've come to the conclusion that you either need to kill no one, or you need to kill everyone. The in-between just isn't as fun. Going ultra stealth with zero casualties or alerts is enjoyable, because it ups the difficulty and you get to avoid detection by jumping in trunks and wall lockers and even dumpsters. Yeah, you laugh now, but this dumpster is incredibly comfy. Yeah, I think I have Wi-Fi in here. But if you're not wanting to take the subtle approach, you absolutely, positively have to kill everyone. Forget everything you know about rules of engagement, murder everything. It doesn't matter if it's separatists, civilians, chickens, cows, even cars, especially cars, because dead things can't testify in court. It's that simple. It's the hitman approach. No one will notice if there is no one to notice. And from what I can gather from the in-game dialogue, these Separatists are quite the war criminals. Yeah, well, I've seen Separatist handiwork in the field, so I don't have any questions. 
torture and killing of POWs, rape and burning civilians alive. So I think it kind of goes without saying that I have no issue in slaying them indiscriminately. And originally, I spared the lives of civilians while operating in the area until I stumbled across this abomination. I am so impressed, yet appalled, yet confused all at the same time. Number one, where the hell did you pull that many fish from? There's no way the local streams and swamps are that plentiful with fish ripe for catching. Number two, what the hell are you doing with all this fish? These things have been sitting here for 38 in-game days straight. You've done nothing with them. And they smell like death. Oh no, wait, wait. They smell like someone revived death, killed death again, and then set him on fire. That's what this smells like. Yeah, you wanna know who the real war criminals are? These people that committed these atrocities against these fish. This is terrifying. Pizza party denied. And on a congruent note, I can never tell if these civilians are nervously spasming around or just awkwardly dancing. It's almost impossible to tell. Wow, this guy seems pretty triggered that I made fun of his fish. On a more serious note, the average Separatist looks like a boogeyman, so thankfully you have a variety of different ammo at your disposal to get rid of them. You've got standard NATO 7.62 rounds, armor piercing rounds if you have a thing against vehicles, disco rounds if you want to unexpectedly start a Georgian rave, and I know this seems intentional, but I swear to you, if you play this game, you will accidentally equip these tagging rounds way too often and start headshotting people unexpectedly. <laughs> But if you want to turn yourself into a sniper rifle god, just equip the DARPA rounds. DARPA rounds are also known as Exacto rounds, which is an acronym for Extreme Accuracy Tasked Ordnance, which is a title that I love because it contains the word extreme. Cutting out the technical nonsense, it's a smart bullet that can adjust its trajectory en route to its target, at least in real life. In the game, it just kind of seems to fly in a straight line without bullet drop or wind influence, so I'm addicted to it. What, you think some separatist rebel scum is going to outgun me when I have DARPA rounds equipped? I don't think so. And speaking of neato features, they even have a karambit knife for you to use. But it's not marble fade, so I'm sure most of you won't use it, but most of the time, I ended up slicing and dicing with the skull crusher anyways. Initiating operation, sneaky ghost. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds feeble, but I love running around stabbing everyone while sustaining myself on nothing but pure adrenaline shots. <clears throat> And when it comes to these gadgets and items, you can either craft them or buy them outright. I found it way easier just to buy everything, but I imagine crafting is more economical, especially at lower levels. I'm also pretty excited to explore the depth of this plot once the game actually comes out, just to see where this puppy foreshadowing goes. Don't be such a goddamn cynic. These are the sick, the elderly, orphans. And puppies? Don't forget the puppies. Fuck you. And I definitely need to hone my driving skills during the beta, because I love the vehicle you get to cruise in, but my wheelman skills are deplorable. And that's about it. I'd like to thank CI Games very much for partnering up and allowing me early access to the game. So if you want any kind of information about the beta or the actual retail release, I will leave all of that down beneath me. Later, nerds.